What is going on, everybody? In in this video, we're providing you a state of the market and stock picks for September 14th, 2022. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as I do provide daily and weekly updates to get you prepared for the day in the week ahead. Now, where do we stand after the core CPI? Now, we were expecting an 8.1 coming off of 8.5 seeing the highest at 9.1 thus far. So uh, coming into today, I said we needed to come in at least at an 8.1 or lower for the market to really rally. And if we came in essentially anything above a 9.1, the market would have just sheer panic. But we came in at 8.3, with lower than 8.5, but higher than expectations. And the reason this is concerning uh, is because of the fact that we've come off of two historic 75-point basis moves and have hardly put a dent in inflation. Uh, so that means that the Fed will continue to pile on rates. Now they are, uh, the percentage of a 100-point basis move has gone way up since this morning uh, as people are expecting a potential 100-point basis move potentially next week because of not really creating a dent in inflation. Now, inflation uh, cycles around, right? So uh, the same things on inflation, yes, some things come down on inflation, on headlines inflation, some things go up. There's a shift in inflation, but that's why, the, that's why the headline inflation is important because it still means there's massive amount of inflation. In the beginning of the summer, we had used cars were going through the roof, right? And then that dialed way back and then Food and energy skyrocketed. Uh, now we're getting into a point to where um, there is a lot of different issues going on that we've been kind of avoiding. And something I really want to get into here is and really kind of just gets me upset in why I do this channel, uh, because the information that's put out by the administration is very uh, deceiving in a lot of uh, a lot of aspects in, in the way things are. A lot of the data uh, is something I keep talking about. You can't go off of data. Data isn't going to tell you anything. Uh, what's going to matter is the headline inflation. And then from that point, uh, you're going to get uh, Fed action. And that's what matters. All the stuff in between, all the Fed members talking in between don't mean anything unless it comes from Powell. Uh, so being said, it's not saying that they can't sway the market. They do intraday for the most part. Uh, but understand that... Um, to get a very pivotal move, it has to come from one of those uh, one of those three sources: monetary policy, uh, core inflation, or coming from Powell. Uh, so, being said, um, today we were expecting uh, 8.1 inflation. Uh, last inflation report was 8.5, and then uh, our currently our current high on inflation is 9.1. We came in at 8.3. Why is this concerning? Uh, because of the fact we came in with two 75-point basis moves, uh, which is historic, and it didn't hardly but put a dent in inflation. And now we're at a point to where the Fed has to take bigger action. And they are talking about a 100-point basis move next week uh, because of this fact. There's economists talking about it that that's more likely what they're going to have to do. Um, the chances have gone way up since this morning that a 100-point basis move is on the table now. Um, something has to be done. We had, uh, The headline inflation needs to come down to four uh, and understand that that's what the, the Fed is battling. And this is something that I talked about what's con concerning me and why I do this channel uh, and why I get upset because the administration came out and said everything is fine and dandy, things are great. Understand you don't want to... Um, uh, create panic in the market, but uh, you have to understand people are getting laid off. If you know somebody, uh, there are massive layoffs across the U.S. There are numbers proving. Don't go off of inflation data. Go off of numbers that are coming. Uh, the best numbers you're going to get are coming off of earnings or coming off of what these companies are doing. Uh, and the fact that um, these companies are letting go of people left and right, and not by a little bit. You're talking about like um, whole sectors, right? And, and companies are just being let go um, because of the fact that 
uh, with the rates going up so quickly, these companies don't have time to adjust. They're going to start making cutbacks uh, to alleviate some of the strain so they can continue to try to make a profit. Um, and in doing so, you're going to harm everything else. And this is what else was concerning today is that the administration was saying that uh, we will have growth inside of inflation. Now, this is something I've told you in the very beginning when we started talking about this whole thing and I educated you about this, that it is not true. You can't have growth and have inflation in the same during the same aspect. You can't have job growth and inflation at the same time. It's either one or the other. If you aim for one, it's going to affect the other. And that's what we're getting is we are combating. And Powell has made it very clear he is going after inflation. And he even called out there's going to be a lot of pain. And this is what we're about to see. We're just starting to see that. And this is something understanding that uh, monetary policy has nothing, has no effect on oil. And that is what's driving this inflation and causing uh, food to skyrocket and causing uh, other energy costs to skyrocket because you're putting such a strain on oil. And now we're looking to buy back oil reserves, something I also talked about. So things are going to get a lot worse. We are in the eye of the storm coming off of seasonal, right? This is supposed to be seasonal. We're supposed to get a lull in demand right now. Demand is going to pick back up in the next report and the reports after that. The closer we start getting into winter, it's going to start getting worse. And this is the concern uh, that we are having going into this winter. And Europe is absolutely falling apart. The ECB is falling apart. And they're trying to cap gasoline prices in hopes that it helps. I mean, you can dive into the weeds and that's fine and that's dandy and look at specific things. A lot of the numbers that are put out are fudged, period. So you have to really kind of, you have to go off of earning statements and what's going on. And we just got uh, about two more weeks before this uh, Q3 is over and then we start getting uh, earnings reports. And then um, we're going to get into Q4 and get the final stretch of this year. Uh, I really don't think we're going to see max pain till probably Q1. Q1, when we're dead of winter, we're going to see max pain. That At that point, we could have hit peak inflation, I think, around that point. Once we get through the winter months, then we can dial it back, and hopefully we can correct. The Fed want it down by 4%, headline down by 4 We We haven't even half that yet. And we still only we still got a couple months be, before we get into like the peak winter season. Like the Fed are going to have to use their tool, which again does not help oil, but what it's going to do is deter companies from hiring, laying off people, and people aren't going to be buying. Right, new ho housing bills have come way down. Uh, housing market's coming way down. Right, people are trying to sell and they can't get rid of. It. No one's going to buy with. Uh, sky high interest rates. It's just not going to happen. People aren't going to do that. And that's just some astronomical deal where right now it's really hard when interest rates are just so high, right? You're going to essentially, you're causing demand destruction is what's going on right now. And you haven't really, we haven't really seen it. We've only seen uh, bits and pieces of a lot of the stuff I've been talking about, and now we're starting to see and it's starting to unfold. Uh, but yet you're being told that everything is okay because they're not trying to induce panic. So the numbers you go off of, you go off of the actions that come off a headline, you go off of the actions of Powell, not what he says, but the actual actions, monetary policy, and you go off of earnings and earnings numbers. Those are probably the most accurate you're going to get. And they're probably not the best, but they're the most accurate you're going to get. Everything else in between is all just fluff and in gray area that really doesn't mean anything. The earnings are going to show us, and we're going to see that in Q3, how much of an impact we had. Because to be honest, this core CPI, I thought we would have had a more of a 
pulled out. I thought we would have came in at 8.1 or lower, a little bit lower. I didn't think much lower. It was the whole one percentage I was talking about. It was kind of a long shot. I didn't really expect that to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did. And yet uh, we came in above expectation and just barely shy of the 8.5 that we had. So that, in my mind, leads me to believe that we aren't walking away unless it's 75 point or 100. Now I'm leaning more towards 100 next week. Only because I know the Fed is going to try to front run this inflation with a tool that doesn't affect oil, uh, front run this thing to um, try to stop the inflation from getting worse in the, in the winter. And the only reason by doing that is continuing to raise interest rates so people get laid off so they can't go to work or they can't afford gas, right? We've already been we've already been talking about people have had multiple jobs just to keep up with the gas. Like we haven't seen oil truly spike yet. I think the the ba- major spike in oil is is yet to come, and we're going to see that in the dead of of winter. And then again, I think that's when we could potentially peak. I think we will peak and we'll come down. It'll still be high, but we'll gradually fall. It's not just going to be overnight. Oh, we're back to four percent. And that's not even talking about all the supply that's still on the shelves that hasn't been reduced yet. You got more seasonal items come in. You have you have a lot of issues with supply. They just don't get fixed over a quarter or two quarters. You had two years where the market ran crazy. And this is the outcome of what happens on the back end of it. And so it's going to take while, a while. We have to understand these cycles are good, though, for the markets. It allows things to reset, normalize, and then uh, go back to a regular market. But you have to go through this nastiness to be able to get there. And that's what we're doing. So uh, technical-wise, I think I've chatted about enough about everything. <laughs> Uh, but technical wise, I'm really watching this key level uh, tomorrow at the, th- the 3,900. Uh, we kind of got to bounce out of there today. We had a straight flush today. Uh, so 50%. And we're trying to at least see if we can retrace back to 40, uh, 20 tomorrow. Uh, ideally for puts, if we could really get a, a 40, 52 run, that would be great. Uh, but we got absolutely no bounce today. And tomorrow, if we gap down below this, this thing is going to flush and then you start looking at about close to about 100 point drops, uh, at least for the next one. And then you got um, about 50, 40 points there uh, for the next one. So you, you do have some space, but the next drop after this one's going to be a pretty big drop. Uh, and if we start talking about um, 100 point basis move, again, I kind of have it marked around that 36, 36 is where I have it at. And if that's what we get, we'll see if the market drops there. Then my theory is, is solidifying. Everything I've talked about, my theory is that's been solidified. And I have record. You can go back and check all my videos. I've talked about this stuff multiple times. Um, broken record here. But nonetheless, I want to see what kind of bounce we get overnight. It's not saying we could stop here and kind of consolidate tomorrow potentially. Uh, we might have one attempt to try to break and get a little wick here and then pull and then maybe run by the end of the week. Remember how I've talked about um, on supports, the market will try to uh, try to get some cushion before that next major event. And I think what could happen, we could potentially hit here, attempt to try to break. If it doesn't break and it holds, I could see us at least trying to push up to the 4k mark 4k might be really pushing it here uh at least uh 3950 mark and then it could potentially die and just kind of sit around this area to find out what happens with monetary policy next week um that is is my opinion and we come in at a 100 point basis move this thing is really going correct at that point it depends where we are on wednesday when that happens and it depends on, um, I believe it's on Wednesday, and it depends on um, on if that uh, starts panic. Because people get a 100-point basis move after two 75-point basis moves, you're going to start introducing panic. I've been telling people they aren't in a recession, but that's not what's going on here. right? There is a recession going on. Europe is getting hammered good majority of the world is getting hammered 
on inflation because the dollar skyrocketed this today it jumped right back up to 109. Yes, oil has come down, but it's still high. It's at eighty-seven dollars a barrel. Dollar, yes, it's come down, it's still high. It's at one hundred and nine. Um, so these things matter, and you're seeing tech hold because tech isn't really going to make a move until it knows about monetary policy. And then if it's a high, if it's seventy-five or a hundred, then you're going to get a big uh, correction in tech. Tech will be the first to go at that point. And then you get your rollover, which can in, <clears throat> induce panic and everything and cause things to really start selling back down to that potentially 36, 36. And again, depending on how much momentum we get, if there is panic, we could potentially break that. But if we do break, I'm going to suggest this now, I will be looking to buy if we break that level, because I think we're going to uh, be hitting a bottom very shortly. I don't like to call bottoms, but I think if you break that level, uh, whatever is going to happen after that is going to wick, whether it's going to take two weeks and it's just going to keep selling. And then I think it's going to start rallying after that. Then I think we'll hit a bottom. I'm not calling a bottom. Uh, again, this is not financial advice, but if it does break 36, 36, I think at that point, it's just a buy for me. That's Again, this is my opinion, strictly my opinion, not financial advice. It's a buy for me. If it breaks 36, 36, I'll be accumulating as much as possible below that level. Uh, but again, it really just depends on how much fear we get here. Because right now, people are digesting that there's the administration really isn't telling the truth and that there is true fear here. We are in a recession. How bad is it going to get? Who's going to lose their job? Bankruptcies, all those things are the next thing on people's mind. That's going to start inducing the fear. People are going to normalize to it. Maybe around the winter time when we start hitting peak inflation, then you, know, you get deflation. Uh, demand destruction, then at that point, you're going to have to wait for the consumer to pick back up and, and realize when are they going to start buying back in. You have to understand once you get demand destruction, you have to have the com a customer come back. Right now, the customer is pretty strong and they've showed that, but the customer has also been living off of credit cards. All is going to play out and then you have to wait for them to come back, right? We're getting to that point where stuff is starting to play out. Just have to be patient and watch and see. Then, uh, again, if we break 36, 36, I'm just going to start uh, DCAing because that is, at my point, is the buy. Um, I've been talking about this leg and it's starting to come down. Uh, so really watching this leg very closely and, and monitoring this leg very closely um, moving forward. So Bitcoin, I'm not going to go over. It's going to follow the market. Uh, I will go over um, Tesla real quick. Uh, just to kind of give you ideas and levels here for me, uh, looking for it to break uh, the 287. Uh, then I got a big level uh, at the 250 or the 267, uh, then 252, then a pretty big gap down to 225, and then down to 212. I really like it around 212. I don't know if we'll get that far. You're going to have to have panic, I think, to have Tesla down this far if it does get this far. But more than likely wick in my opinion i think more than likely you'll see tesla float around this 254 potentially break again if there's panic uh you can see tesla back down at these levels again uh you just have to really wait and see where the panic level is at and where we go from that point so but uh that's pretty much it for this video it's very long and i know i talked about just about the general index tesla um and a lot of um this is state of the market because that is important in trying to uh, let you understand where I am coming from in my full thought process of why uh, I believe things are the way they are. Um, and if you like me, subscribe because of that. If not, then, you know, it's just an opinion, just like everybody else. I've always said you need to build your own uh, thesis each and every day. You should have multiple opinions. It does help. Um, in my case, I don't have multiple opinions. I've, I've learned from many different mentors um, but my thing is, is I've always, the biggest thing I've learned is you need to, um, take what you've learned and apply it. And then you make small adjustments and then, then you find the way you trade, not the way somebody else trades, the way you trade. And then, then you go off of that. I'm a very patient trader uh, because I know there are bigger plays at hand. If you just be patient, wait for the technicals, wait for the event. 
And that is what I try to do. It's not saying I don't always hit it 100%, um, but I try to be as patient as I can, and I wait, and I wait for my setup, and then I execute when it happens. So with that being said, if you made it this far, go ahead and drop a like button. Till next time, I will see you guys later.